Hi folks, I'm Bruce Kolodny, the California gun attorney, gunlaw.com. For over 30 years, I've been very busy here in California defending gun owners in court. California has, without a doubt, the strictest state gun laws in the entire United States. The subject of this vehicle is lawful transportation of firearms in motor vehicles in the state of California. And over my career, this has been one of the biggest legal hazards for gun owners in California. <clears throat> so, just how do you tr lawfully tr transport guns when you're driving in California? Well, the number one rule is they have to be completely unloaded. And in California, unloaded means completely unloaded. Unlike other states where merely having an empty firing chamber is sufficient compliance, in California, if there, uh, the law is that, that if there's a live round of ammunition which can be discharged from the firearm and it's attached in any manner from which it can be fired, then it's deemed to be loaded. Now, in addition to uh, the prohibition on carrying a loaded firearm in a motor vehicle in California, we have another legal hazard for gun owners driving in California, and that's the prohibition on carrying a handgun or a registered so-called assault weapon unlawfully concealed in a motor vehicle. They have to be concealed, but they have to be correctly concealed to be compliant with current California law. So, uh, what our code says is that you can carry a, a handgun or a registered assault weapon in a secure, fully enclosed container that's locked with a key lock, a combination lock, or something similar. It also specifies that a secure, fully enclosed lock container does not include a utility compartment or a glove compartment. Well, glove Glove compartment's easy, but what the hell is a utility compartment? Our statutes don't tell us, our case law don't tell us. So I highly recommend that if your vehicle has a front console, do not use it. I also recommend against the use of these compartments, even locking compartments that are often found in the back of hatchback vehicles or uh, SUV, sport utility vehicles. Uh, people often ask me, they say I drive a pickup truck, I've got a steel toolbox that locks, bolted in the bed behind the cab. With those, I think they're okay. The reason why, uh, there's a good argument in court that that, let's call it a cross bed, uh, pickup truck bed toolbox. It's the functional equivalent of a trunk, meaning that if you want access to it, you have to pull the keys out of the ignition, get out from behind the wheel, walk around to the back, stick the key in the lock, and open that toolbox, just like you would if you had a trunk. Now, I know there's some exceptions. Some trunks can be opened with a cable. Uh, but as I said, I think across a, a steel toolbox or a hard plastic toolbox that's bolted to the bed of your pickup truck and locked, and remember to lock these containers, uh, that uh, is, is compliant. Now, we also have a requirement in California that a handgun cannot be visible from the outside of the vehicle. Now, all of these laws uh, apply. Uh, the simple way to look at the, the, the application of these laws is if you're not on ground where you can legally fire that firearm, then these laws apply. So, and I also want you to be aware that o uh, over my career, on several occasions, I've had to defend a gun owner in California where they had uh, not a single round of ammunition. The gun was completely unloaded. There was no ammunition in the vehicle. There was no ammunition on the person of uh, that gun owner. In other words, they didn't have ammunition in their pocket or their purse, but the handgun was not properly uh, secured in the vehicle. Also in California, we have published Court of Appeal opinions, which are you know, set binding legal precedent holding that even partial concealment uh, can be a violation. There's a published case where the officer, the facts recite that the officer saw the butt of a revolver sticking out from underneath the front seat. Even though it was obvious that it was a firearm, the Court of Appeal held that that was sufficient concealment to violate the statute. Now, there are many exceptions to these uh, prohibitions on uh, unlawfully carrying a loaded firearm, unlawfully carrying a concealed, uh, an unlawfully concealed handgun. But here's my philosophy with the, uh, the many exceptions. Uh, if we need them in court, great. We'll use them to the fullest extent allowed by law and to the best of my skills. 
However, uh, if you have, if, if you're thinking about relying on one, think long and hard before you do, and think about how you may be able to prove it in, uh, in court that you fell within one of these exceptions. Now, despite the constitutional uh, guarantee of a presumption of innocence when accused of a crime, the California courts have ruled that some of these exceptions are what are known as affirmative defenses. For example, uh, if you're accused of unlawfully carrying a loaded and concealed handgun in a motor vehicle and it's, you have a license to carry a concealed weapon, and yes, they are available in California in some counties. Other counties, it's extremely difficult to obtain a, a a CCW in California, but the California courts say uh, that it's your burden to show that you had uh, a valid license to carry. And how would you do that in court? Typically, you would serve a subpoena ducis tecum uh, on the law enforcement agency that issued your concealed carry permit. Now, in California, the technical term is a license to carry a concealed weapon, but like the rest of the country, we refer to them here as a CCW. California also has provisions forbidding the open carry of unloaded handguns and the open carry of unloaded long guns, rifles, and shotguns. Uh, same basic rule, if you cannot legally fire the gun, then you can't carry it openly. Now, this is likely to be an issue uh, in, in ongoing and future uh, Second Amendment litigation because basically in many areas, particularly the urban counties in California, uh, it's virtually impossible uh, for most citizens, law-abiding citizens, to obtain a CCW, yet they're not allowed to carry openly despite the U.S. Supreme Court opinions in Heller and McDonald saying that we do have an individual right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. Now, the best way to avoid these problems, uh, being accused of a crime, while transporting your lawfully owned, lawfully possessed firearms in a motor vehicle is use a portable locking container. Now, even uh, I tell people, even if you have a, a vehicle uh, with a traditional trunk, still use a locked container. Cars uh, are mechanical devices. You can have a mechanical breakdown. You can be involved in an accident. A drunk driver blows a red light, T-bones you and your car is leaving the scene not under its own power but on the back end of a tow truck. You need to be prepared to get your firearms home lawfully and discreetly. So use those locking containers. Now on the same subject, lawful transportation of firearms in a motor vehicle in California, I'm often asked what about a motorhome? Well here are the simple rules for the transportation of firearms in motorhomes in California. While you're driving it, it's treated just like a car or a truck. When it's parked and you're down for the night or for a few hours, it depends. Now, if you just pull into a rest stop along the, uh, along the interstate highway because you know you need to get a few hours sleep and you don't want to pay $100 or more for a hotel room here, uh, does that qualify as your temporary residence or campsite? That's one of the exceptions in California. You can have a loaded firearm that's your temporary residence or campsite. That language is in the penal code section that creates this exception. However, if you end up in a jury trial, it's normally considered a question of fact to be determined by the jury. And by the way, questions of law are determined by the judge. So if you end up uh, sleeping at a rest stop, you take your firearm and you load it, and uh, you end up in front of a jury, uh, you can expect a, a seasoned district attorney to argue, where are the picnic benches, where are the fire pits? And then you've also, in addition to the problem of getting around the loaded, you have the issue of unlawful concealment. Yeah, you can put it in a locking container that you can open quickly. Maybe it has it, uh, one that's equipped with a biometric lock. Although, I, in an emergency, I'm not very trustful of electronic devices. I'm old-fashioned. I tend to like a key that I can turn. All right, now, uh, regarding campsites, keep in mind that uh, some public campgrounds may have additional restrictions on the possession of firearms, and they may have more strict uh, regulations concerning how firearms can be possessed. For example, in California state parks, the regulation basically says it has to be locked and disassembled. When you're traveling through anti-gun states like California, there is a federal law. I sometimes call it the Safe Passage Act, and I've got a, an article on my website, gunlaw.com, that addresses this, and um, I'll also have a video up that'll talk about this. 
What it basically says is that, say for example, I'll, I'll illustrate it beginning with an example. Let's say you live in Florida and you're going to go moose hunting in Maine and you're going to travel uh, by car or truck. So you, you're going to go through Massachusetts once you get to New England. Notorious anti-gun state. Well, this federal law says that if it's legal for you to possess and carry the firearm in the state that you're departing and the state of your destination, then you uh, can lawfully drive through gun, uh, states that uh, require that you have a special permit or license uh, because federal law preempts state law under the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution. You do have to have the firearm and the ammunition separated. Uh, they should both be under lock and key. Uh, again, read my article on this subject on gunlaw.com or watch the other video on that subject. Now, uh, people often ask me, uh, what happens if I get caught unlawfully carrying uh, a loaded firearm in my vehicle or uh, I have a handgun uh, either exposed or unlawfully exposed in my vehicle or unlawfully concealed in my vehicle? Well, uh, historically, most of these violations have been prosecuted as misdemeanors. And in fact, California law provides that if uh, you have no prior felony convictions, no prior misdemeanor convictions for weapons or drug offenses, and the firearm is listed in your name in what's known as the automated firearm system here in California, the district attorney can only file a misdemeanor charge. Well, they could file a felony, but you'd have good grounds to move to, uh, for an order to have it dismissed before trial. The AFS is known as the, again, is known as the Automated Firearm System, and here in California for decades, if you purchase or have a handgun transferred to you through a licensed dealer, a record of that transfer is created at the state capitol at DOJ headquarters in Sacramento. And as of January 1st, 2014, uh, this uh, central record keeping function was extended to rifles and shotguns. So when you drive with motor vehicles, be careful. Uh, I also recommend you watch another one of my videos, uh, Close Encounters, Gun Owners and Law Enforcement Contacts. Any other questions, uh, please visit my website, gunlaw.com. There's many other um, articles and uh, questions, various materials, uh, all intended to help gun owners uh, survive in California without having to come in and see me and sit across the desk and write me a check with a lot of zeros. Keep in mind also that uh, this is general information that I'm providing. It's subject to change. Uh, I don't think we're going to see much pro-gun legislation here in California. Uh, don't expect any of these, got, these laws to be repealed by our legislature. However, the pro-Second Amendment uh, movement has had great success in the courts the last 10 years and I think we're going to have even more success. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Good shooting, happy hunting. Come back and watch again soon.